About 12 years ago, I got this drill as a present for Christmas. It's a really good drill, but since it's so old, it has one big flaw. Nickel cadmium battery. These batteries are known for their so-called memory effect. If they were not fully discharged before being charged again, they would lose capacity over time. They also had a self-discharge problem, which meant that when these batteries were left in storage, they could lose up to 20% of charge in a single month. With aforementioned issues, this battery didn't last for more than 2 years. It was sitting dead for a very long time until I decided to fix it. Back then, I didn't have the resources to make this 100%. I just needed it to work. I couldn't order all of the necessary components, so I worked with what I already had. The resulting product turned out to be a new lithium-ion battery, with cheap low-current cells. It had no protection and I used to charge it by connecting a 21 volt supply directly to the battery terminals. Even though it was built so crude, the battery worked for years, and it only recently stopped working. Two of the cells died and that means that now is the time to rebuild this battery and give it all of the features it needs. My plan was to equip the battery with new high current 18650 cells. I have a broken electric skateboard battery that I made from Samsung 30Q cells, so I'll just take a few from there. These cells have a discharge rating of about 20 amps, which should be more than enough for this drill. Just one of the cells in this battery died, so it would be a shame to waste the whole thing, since it didn't have many charge cycles. My drill battery is 18 volts, and one lithium ion cell has a maximum voltage of 4.2 volts. To multiply the voltage, you simply add more cells in series. To be safe, I would go with a battery that has 4 cells in series, which would give me a maximum voltage of 16.8 volts. That would be the safe way, but would also make the drill much weaker. So I decided to test the drill with a 21 volt 5S battery and it works without problems. It's been that way for years, so I'm going to continue with the same cell arrangement as before. The cells inside the battery can differ in voltage over time. No single cell is made to be the exact same capacity, and over a large period of charge cycles, some cells cells may be charged more than the others. If there was no protection to prevent bad things from happening and you connected a 21 volt charger to a highly misbalanced battery, some cells may overcharge, catch on fire or even explode. Here comes the BMS, battery management system, to resolve all of these issues. The one that I got has overcharge, over discharge, over current and temperature protection, while also balancing the cells. Not all of these boards come with a balancing feature, so make sure to double check before ordering. To charge the battery I wanted a simple solution, if possible a USB-C one. I did some research and found this board. It's a 5S charger that can be powered with quick charge 3, power delivery or with a 4.5 to 15 volt supply. I was a bit confused while looking at the datasheet, but I later found out that there are three main LED indicators. A red light shines while the battery is charging, and a green one when the battery is fully charged. If the blue LED was on, it means that the board is using one of the USB quick charge protocols. These lights are going to be useful, so I'll take two 3mm LEDs to mount them to the battery case. I want to be able to check the battery's charge state at all times, so I got a small voltmeter and a push button switch to activate it. Initially I wanted to 3D model the whole battery from scratch, but if I went that route, this video would probably be uploaded in 2025. At first I couldn't come up with a simple solution, but after I slept on it, I decided to make a panel that would bolt on the back of the battery case. It would cover all of the ugly parts that were already cut into the plastic and would hold the new component securely. Before assembling anything, I needed a proof of concept. Since the cells had a bit of wear, I wanted to cover them with new heat shrink wraps to prevent shorts. At this point, all of the cells need to be charged to a similar voltage, so that the BMS doesn't have to balance them right away. I arranged the cells same as before since they fit it in the battery case. I've already built hundreds of these packs, so I'm comfortable with soldering them. I know that this is not the recommended way, but I don't have a spot welder. I'm in a controlled environment, fire extinguisher standing by. I connected the cells in series and secured the BMS board. The balance leads from the battery management system need to be soldered to each cell. Starting from the minus of the whole pack, each series connection has to have one wire going to the BMS. After connecting the balance leads, it's important to test if everything is connected right. To do that, I unplug the connector and measure between ground and each pin with my multimeter. Be very careful while doing this, so you don't create a short. The balance connector connects to the BMS and the battery minus to the B minus pad. The P minus pad on the BMS is used for charging and discharging the battery. There is an array of MOSFETs to switch the battery on and off. This is the whole battery, protected and with all features a lithium ion battery needs. 
to test the charger board, I use this 12V car charger module that has quick charge 3.0 and power delivery. I used the USB tester to check if one of the protocols was triggered, and it was showing 12V on the input of the charger. Then I tried measuring the voltage on the output, and it was changing from around 21 volts to 18.8. That was happening because the battery wasn't connected yet, and there was no current draw. I soldered the battery to the charger and tested it again. The red light immediately lit up, followed by a blue one. That meant the battery was charging using quick charge or power delivery. Around 16 watts were going inside the charger, but I wanted to measure the current from the charger to the battery as well. It was showing about 750 milliamps, which is a bit lower than the 1 amp recommended the charge current for these cells, so that was perfectly fine. Last thing to test were the multimeter and the push button switch. The multimeter I used was rated for up to 100 volts, so I connected it directly to the battery. The push button switch has two connectors for the LED inside, and it's rated for up to 24 volts, so I connected it directly to the battery as well. And here comes my favorite part, the build. I wanted to test fit everything inside the battery case, to make sure everything will fit. The battery could be inserted inside and the BMS board was not in a way of anything. I took the 3D printed part and placed it on the back of the battery. Some more cutting and drilling was needed to fit all of the components to the back. The 3D printed part covered all of the ugly parts, so that was awesome. After that, I needed to drill two holes so I can secure the plate to the battery. As you could probably guess, I didn't have a working drill at the time of recording, so I tried drilling it by hand. This took a lot of time and didn't do anything, so I took one 5S battery I had laying around and temporarily connected it to the drill. After drilling the holes, I tried screwing everything together, and it looked really good. The fit was awesome. I took the top part of the battery to see how it all looks together, and then I realized that the seam between the two shells was visible. I modified the model once again, 3D printed it and continued with the build. I fitted the voltmeter, the push button switch and the LEDs inside the printed part and glued them with super glue. The micro USB connector on the board was in a way. It was preventing the USB-C connector to sit flush with the exterior face of the 3D printed part. To solve this, I decided to desolder it. I put some flux on the connector, heated the whole board and then the connector until the solder melted. After that, I cleaned the PCB from flux with isopropanol. The board was now fitted perfectly and the USB was flush. I used some super glue again to hold the board in place. Then I connected the voltmeter and the switch. Two remaining wires will later connect to the battery. Now was the time to put everything inside, so I soldered one thick red wire to the positive terminal of the pack. I secured the 3D printed panel to the case with M3 bolts and M3 lock nuts. P- pad from the BMS connects to the battery terminal and the charger minus. For the positive connections, I connected them directly from the battery. At this point, everything was connected together and was working perfectly. I tested everything and there were no problems. The only thing left to do was to connect the two 3mm LEDs, a red one and blue one. The green LED didn't matter because the red one would turn off when the battery was full. I wanted to have the blue one as well so I know if the battery is fast charging. To do this, I used some heat shrink to protect the leads. I soldered one common ground wire and two thin extensions. Then I desoldered the S and D LEDs from the board and using a multimeter determined the polarity of the pads. I soldered the thin extension wires to the board and everything was done. I put some hot glue all around the battery to protect everything. Then I put the top shell on top, screwed everything together and the battery was done. I have this drill for a very long time now, and to me, it was very worth it. I'm sure that this battery is going to work much better than if I was to get a new drill with a better and more modern pack. Let me know what you think. If you have any questions, leave them down below, and if you like the video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thanks!